Hey guys, this video is going to be about the equipment and tools that I use to recover this gold. I start with the uh, countertop. Is a a regular cabinet countertop that I found in a dumpster, and I got lucky on that. The legs are came from Home Depot. I put three L brackets on the wall and attached the countertop to the L brackets. And I got my chair, just trying to be comfortable. <laughs> and uh, I've got a video out about the rock tumbler and one about the uh, pressure cooker slash incinerator. And I'm going to show a video about how to use or what to do with uh, the blender. It's a, it's a process I figured out. And you can see all the jars that have got all the different parts in, a, in them in the back. This is a gold retort that you use to separate the gold from mercury that I'll be showing later on how to use mercury to suck the gold out of all the other trash and stuff. But what this is, is you heat this, now you put your mercury and your uh, material down in here and heat it up and the mercury vaporizes, goes down through this tube, comes out goes in this bowl and but when I did it the first time this was painted on the inside and the outside and when it got hot all that paint turned to ash got my gold all dirty so I didn't like that so I took wire brushes and cleaned the inside with this one cleaned the outside with this one and it took all the paint off all the way down to about here. And <coughs> but anyway, you uh, fill this up with water. The mercury vapor goes up, goes down, and it cools the water in here, cools it down, turns it back into a liquid. To get it hot, I put it on the stove and use that on it. Uh, when I first tried it, it worked. But since then, I had trouble with my stove, and the uh, apartment complex replaced the stove for me. But this, this stove doesn't get as hot as the other one, so it didn't work with the stove anymore. I got a regular propane torch, and I get it as hot as the stove will get it, and then I turn this torch on and let it warm up 20, 30 minutes. And it worked pretty good that way. And one thing I still want to do is get a plastic tube, probably a, some kind of hose from Home Depot, put it on this end to where it'll go down and go under the water that's in this bowl. Because anytime you heat mercury, mercury up, you get mercury vapor, there's bound to be some vapor still coming out of the end of this by the time it gets down here. But if it goes down under water, it doesn't have any choice but to turn it back into a liquid and then all that mercury will come together. And when you get through doing that, when you turn the heat off, take that hose out of the water. Because I don't know what would happen when it starts cooling down, it's going to suck that water up in that pipe. I don't know how far it'll go or when it gets up here it hits hot pipe could turn to steam, blow it all over the place. So it's best just take the end of the hose out of the water. And I put this plastic bag over the end of this. You can put it over the end of the hose because there's bound to be mercury still in this pipe just to be on the safe side. I think that's about it for the retort. This is the equipment I use to clean up the material after and got through with it and the uh, rock tumbler. These are screens that I 
I picked up and a local prospector shop, gold prospectors. This one's 150 grit. It's the smallest grit, uh, 150 mesh. It's the smallest mesh they had. I was looking for 200 mesh. They didn't have it. And I believe this one's 50 mesh. And 50 holes per square inch. And then I bought a, a small bucket at Home Depot. I uh, found out the bigger buckets were awful hard to work with. Then I've got this tub. And when you get through with the uh, rock tumbler, you pour it, well, essentially, you pour this in there and you wash it all down and it strains it out. And I rig this up, hook up to my shower head to rinse everything down. It works pretty well. This catches all the stuff, and you do not want that stuff going down in your sewer. It'll stop it right up. It's like concrete when it starts drying. But you rinse it all down with this. You let it settle, and you do other things with it. I'll show you that on a, another video. And if you guys are any prospectors out there that have done any plaster mining, you recognize that. <laughs> I do use it once in a while. And trying to make things work. That makes a real good funnel. <laughs> yeah, something to use. This is a furnace that I bought online. Uh, I've got it on one of my playlists. They've got a, a video about it, how to use it. And uh, they give you a website on there, and the website's where I ordered this one. This is uh, propane, or I got map gas and propane, but the map gas, it'll work with, with two bottles of regular propane, because the map gas gets a little bit hotter, but it costs three times as much as one uh, regular propane. These I picked up at Home Depot just an extension. This is a normal torch head that you set up in there. And make sure it doesn't go in too far. And these air holes have to be exposed because it's not getting any air, it's not going to burn. They say warm it up and then Take this, put your material in there, drop that down in there, and you drop this down in there where you're supposed to get that squared. This is for the taller crucibles like that. And this goes on top of that. It takes 10 or 15 minutes to melt your material down depending on what it is. And they say put this on top of there, that's my mold, and I will be using at least one glove, and it's probably the other hand I'll be using it like this, you know, and I wonder if Michael Jackson was a scrapper, <laughs> I don't know, but here's the uh, flux that you're supposed to mix your material with. This thing comes with instructions. I mean, it's almost foolproof on how to do it. In order to light the, the gas on the inside, I just happen to have an extra butane bottle, or propane. So, that'll work. I suggest you wear safety glasses you never know if there's anything in there that's going to pop out of there or anything. Wear gloves, wear long sleeve shirts, don't wear shorts. Uh, you know, just be safe, be smart. <coughs> you know, I've seen people try to work on these 
board. And uh, I think I'm gonna try to do this. Try to get the board to stay still. Or they'll stand it up like this. Try to get it off that way. Just kind of came up with a better idea. I got this board. And put some pads on the back of it. And put two bolts in there, counter sunk them on the other side and all that. I drill two holes in this counter. Didn't go anywhere. This is a piece of material off the end of a couch. A piece of wood I got blocked down on there. But you can put this at a pair against that wood and you can you don't have to hold on to it or anything. Rip these off, whatever. And it works pretty well. But then I thought about going after these uh, monolithic ceramic capacitors. And the really small stuff. And it gets down in this material and it's hard hard to get out. So came up with this. It's a piece of uh well, it's a top off of I don't know, a C D player or something. But you can lay this up there and you can scrape all these off and everything and then dump them all off on there. Yeah. Grab a jar and dump all this stuff in there. It works pretty good. And I think I'm going to wait on another video to show a bunch of the hand tools and things like that, ways to use those. I think on my next video I'm going to incinerate some uh, monolithic ceramic capacitors and see how that works. And then put them in a grinder and grind them up with a, with a rock tumbler. And I guess that's about it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, uh, like the video. If you want to leave a message down below, give me an idea, give me some suggestions, hints, anything. Uh, if you got anything bad to say, keep it to yourself. <laughs> See you later.